Good morning. Um, we're going to Rottnest Island today. So Rottnest Island, if you don't know, is a small island off of Perth, basically. I think it's 18 square kilometres, so it is very small. Um, and the main, I guess, thing that I know it for is the little quokkas, which are little like animals. And I don't really know much about them. I don't know if they're marsupials or what, but they look like they're smiling all the time. They're so cute. So I'm quite excited to see them. Um, we're at Bee Shed now, which is a ferry terminal in Perth, uh, well, in Fremantle. We're going to get the ferry. It's about 8.30 in the morning. The ferry leaves at 10 past 9. Um, the ferry cost, I think, about $57 return, plus $30 for bicycle hire per adult for the day. Rotness today. Also, you can park here all day and it costs $10. Just FYA. There's the ferry. And this is Victoria Key. trying to find this everywhere but it's just when you get off the ferry um, this is the information from the Aboriginal traditional owners of the land and they call the island Wajimup or Nest Island so have a read of that it's very important very historic first little glimpse of the quokkas they're just literally chilling in a the main like shopping kind of food area. You going? Um, so yeah, as you get off the ferry, the visit centre is right in front of you. Got free maps and stuff. The we've hired the bikes from Pedal and Flippers or something, which is like what you just add on when you book the ferry. So we're just trying to find that. Um, when you, yeah, literally behind the visitor centre is like the little town. It's got a bakery and stuff, looks amazing. A subway, a few restaurants and a shop and stuff. And there was quokkas just like in the middle, just like eating stuff off the floor. So I'm sure we'll see loads more. Built by the sign said Monsignor, Monsignor, don't really know how to say it, O'Shea, Irish guy. Bad. This is my bike. Most people would have gone for these blue ones, right? Because they got more of them. There's um, different cycling trails you can do. I think we're going to do the 22 kilometer one, which basically goes all the way around the island. Three to five hours, I think. Um, and snorkeling is going to be really good on Rotness as well. So, well, obviously not on, but just off of Rotness. So, we have got a map from the visitor centre and we're just going to sort of slowly do the um, bike trail and do as much snorkeling as we can is the plan. We also bought a packed lunch from Woolies because we're really organised. I'm not even joking, that is the bike place there and I fell off here already because I stopped and then just fell to the side. I've had it two minutes. Also two girls like rode past me as I was falling off in slow motion. So that was a bit embarrassing. Like, you're right. I was like, mm, yeah, don't worry, I do it all the time. Because, I mean, I actually do. Anyway, these are what the houses look like on Rotnest. Well, I think these are houses anyway. I don't see what else they would be. And this is the view. Not like any Australian house I've seen before. It feels like Middle Eastern, maybe? Or like Mediterranean? Not Australian. First lookout, literally rode for like two minutes. Just looking across the water. Just see in the distance, there's Perth. There's a lighthouse, probably gonna push the bike up there. 
So that there is Pinky Beach, probably about a five minute ride from the visitor centre. We're about to go and have a little snorkel eh? in here. Eh? So didn't really see much at Pinky Beach in the way of fish or anything. Um, it's a nice little swim though. I'm just reading a sign here, um, Paradise or Prison. So 1914, Rottnest Island was closed to holidaymakers to allow for the Commonwealth Department of Defence to establish a prisoner of war camp. So yeah, basically for about a year-ish, um, Rottnest was used as a prisoner of war camp and then it was handed back to um, the state government who reopened it for recreation. So it seems like it's always been a tourist attraction, like going back even like that far. I'm not sure if these are like holiday homes or people's actual homes, but you can see like everyone is. It's like The Sims, everyone's just riding around having a great time. This is Long Reach Bay and it is stunning. Like we've hardly gone anywhere yet and already the beaches are unreal. Look at that. It's hardly even on it as well. So I don't know if it's just going to be like this all the way around, but at the moment I can cycle along looking at this scenery all day. This is Geordie Bay. The lake one side and the ocean just over that hill there. This is amazing. Like a mixture of Scotland, England, Ireland, and like Australian paradise on the other side. So this behind me is Parakeet Bay, which, if you can also see behind me, there are so many bikes and so many people. Because I guess it must be like the most popular snorkel spot. Most popular so far, anyway. But I can see why. Look at that. A little bit inland is the Pink Lake. It's not massively pink like Port Gregory, but it's pretty nice. This is Armstrong Bay, Marine Sanctuary Zone. It's a little bit quieter than the last one. I didn't see too much uh, snorkeling, um, but I don't know if I went that far enough because I'm on my own. So this one, a little cove, so as it's a uh, Marine Sanctuary Zone, I might get to see a little bit more. Uh, but the ride is beautiful. It's amazing. And it's, it's a bit hilly, but it's not too hard. I'll probably stop and have some lunch here. Great picnic spot. Another beach, but come on, look at this view. We've made it to the opposite side of the island, West End, and uh, Cape Blaming. I'm not really sure how you say it, um, but it, I know I probably just said it, but it's such a beautiful ride. Like, it's a bit hilly, not gonna lie, I have got off and pushed my bike at some points. But it's like what I'd imagine England, Scotland, Ireland, and Wales to look like if we had nice weather mashed up with like Australia and some parts of like. Greece and Cyprus, I don't know. It's a weird, weird kind of mixture, I feel like, of places. Doesn't feel like Australia, for sure. But I just can't keep looking look at this. Just look. I, I know I just keep showing you beaches, but that just looks like it's not real. It looks like paradise. Pure paradise. back to where we started and then realised we'd ridden two kilometres in the wrong direction and missed a whole chunk out. So <laughs> we're going to go back on ourselves two kilometres to do the rest which is eight kilometres. So just for the 10k for us. <laughs> Railway station. It's a bit creepy actually. 
I don't know if it is still working or not. I guess it is. Okay, so we might have given up on that pretty soon after I said it. Basically, I'll show you. We were supposed to do the 22k orange, which is all the way around here, which is what I'm showing you is what we actually did. So all the way down here, all the way to the west end, back up here and along, and here, here. Now, this is where we went wrong, because instead of coming down here and doing these snorkel spots and coming back up to where we started, we accidentally cut through here and realized when we got to here. <laughs> we have missed this little section here. So Parker Point, Salmon Bay, Port Boys Bay. Which really isn't too bad, because I feel like we have seen the island, basically all of the island. So we are now gonna go to the bakery that we spotted when we first got here. Um, it's like literally all has been motivating us around the island is like a pie. So if they sold out, we'd be heartbroken. Quaka quaka. Also, I don't know if I said, um, but there are pretty much no cars on the island. So there's so many bikes, there's bikes everywhere. Um, but there's shuttle buses you can use to get around, but I'd definitely recommend getting the bikes just cause you properly see everything. And yeah, you get to stop off and just look at the sights and do whatever you want. Um, and obviously the quackers. So yeah, definitely get a bike if you do come to Rottnest. Um, but yeah, like, like I said, I think there's just the bus and the few like, a, like very few vehicles. I've seen like one ute and I just saw a kind of lorry drive around the corner then. So I think unless it's for like the actual running of the island, I don't think you can have cars here. I really should have like videoed inside the bakery earlier because when we walked in it looks insane. Like there's so many fresh massive cakes and donuts, pies everywhere. But um, I'm so glad we sacked the last little bit of that off because they were very low on pies. So I went for steak and mushroom. Look at that. Look at that pastry. Steak and mushroom. Oh yeah just finished the pies and had as my to get donuts for free, two more pies <laughs> and another sausage roll because <laughs> they're back to shop. So we managed two pies, two sausage rolls and a donut. I think that's pretty impressive for two people. Um, it's like nearly time to leave Rottnest and I'm really sad. It's been a really really good day. Um, Purely just because there's so much history on the island, so much nature, and what I love about Australia is like they see something's good, they see something's naturally beautiful, or there's a lot of wildlife or something, and they leave it alone and they preserve it. Um, and that, yeah, was one of the things that I love most about this country. Definitely recommend Rottnest Island. It's cost us probably, yeah, like 100, about well, $90 roughly. For the day and it has been one of the highlights of this trip so far for me purely because it's unlike anywhere i've been in australia before it's kind of like in some places it reminds me of like devon and cornwall in england other places it reminds me of tasmania and then some look really like i said before like mediterranean european it's the only place in the world that you're going to find a quokka and they're well cute so yeah rodness for it